All right, we're back working on um, arithmetic sequences again. We're going to move on to recursive formula. So recursive formula is not really the most useful. What it does is it shows us simply how to get from one term to the next. Otherwise, we don't do anything with the recursive formula. It's, um, it's really almost just another way to say what the pattern or the sequence is. So things that have to happen, you have to name the first term. Because if you don't name the first term, no one will know where the pattern starts. So you have to have a starting point. So that's what I, this is supposed to be like a line here, but with the font it looks a little crazy. But so you have to name what the first term is. Then all you're doing is filling in the value for the D. Because this says, if you want to find the 10th term, you take the ninth term and add the common difference to it. If you want the 30th term, you're going to take the 29th term and add the D. If you want the 72nd term, you're going to take the 71st term and add D. So if you want the nth term, you're going to take the term before it, which would be A sub N minus 1, and add the D to it. And that's it. So there's nothing really useful about this formula, except it's pretty basic and it's easy to read. So number 11, write the recursive form for this sequence. Well, the sequence starts at 45, and it looks like we're subtracting 3 each time. So we're going to say that if you want the nth term, you're going to take the one before it and subtract 3. And that is starting with 45. And that's it. So all you're doing is filling in the D and filling in the first term. All right, this example is asking us to kind of go the opposite. So we're being asked for the first four terms of the sequence. Well, first of all, right here, we're given the first term. So we know that the first term is three. Then we look here and we can see that all we need to do is add four. So if we add four to this, we would get seven. If we add four, that would be 11. If we add four, that would be 15. So those are your first four terms of the sequence. So again, the recursive form is not really very useful. It's very simple, but we don't do a lot with it because if we were asked to find the 30th term, we would need the 29th, but to find the 29th, we would need the 28th, but to find the 28th, we would need the 27th and so on. So it's really just not useful in that sense. The explicit and closed form, however, is the one that is useful. And this ends up being just a linear equation. You're going to end up with y equals mx plus b. That's the whole idea, is when you do the explicit or the closed form, that's the same as slope-intercept form. That's all it is. It's the same thing. So actually, I probably should write that. So it's the same as slope-intercept, I'm going to abbreviate there, form. All right. So, explicit or closed form, it doesn't matter. Some people say explicit, some people say closed. As long as you know both, it's not a big deal. But it's the y equals mx plus b. The problem is, is that since we're not really thinking about ordered pairs, we're thinking about our sequence, all we're going to do is say that the nth term is going to be the common difference times the nth term, with the starting point being the zeroth term, which is kind of weird. And people will argue and tell you that the zeroth term doesn't really even exist. So for this one, we are asked to write the explicit formula for this sequence. Well, the information that we need to know is the D and the A0. So it looks like we are subtracting 6 each time. So if this is the first term, then what would come before it would be the zeroth term, which should be a negative 26. So the explicit formula for this sequence would be a n equals the common difference times n plus the starting point. So you can see that this 
would be the same as y equals mx plus b. So that's what it is as a line. So this is our closed or explicit form of the sequence. All right, last thing, function notation. Function notation um, is something that's just been a running um, topic all year long. It tells you what the situation is about. It lets you know that what you're dealing with is a function, which means that all of the x's are different. So if we fill in an x, we're not going to possibly get two different answers. So for every x, there's only one answer for the y. So um, it's I like function notation because it's easy to see what's happening and then you can see how it's related to an ordered pair that would be um, on the coordinate plane. So if we look at this, I've given you two equations here. We say this as f of x. So f of x is negative x squared minus 5x and then g of x is 3x minus 10. So what this is saying is the function that where x is the independent variable. So we're starting with the x. We fill in the x. That's your input. And then this answer here, what we get, is going to be the output. So f of x is the same thing as y. So that's why we could say y equals negative x squared minus 5x. Now, the advantage to this is if I had this as y equals and this as y equals, then you can't distinguish between the two, and they are not the same. So that's the whole purpose of the function notation. Because if we had y equals for every single equation out there, then that would be saying that they're all equal to the same thing, they're all equal to y, and that's just not true. All right, this one says g of negative 4. So what that's saying is what is the value of this function if we fill in negative 4? So since this is g, I need to use this one. So this right here tells me to fill in x with a negative 4. So if we work this out, that would be negative 12 minus 10, so negative 22. So what we could say is that g of negative 4 is equal to negative 22. So that says when I filled in x with negative 4, the answer was negative 22, and that right there is your ordered pair. So if you wanted to graph this line, you would have a point at negative 4, negative 22. All right, this one says f of negative 2. So now this is telling me to use this function. That's how I know which one, because it's labeled as f. And I'm being told to fill in negative 2 in place of the x. So we have a negative and then negative 2 squared minus 5 times negative 2. All right, so negative 2 squared would be 4. Opposite of that is negative 4. Negative 5 times negative 2 would be plus 10. So this equals 6. So that tells us that when x was negative 2, the answer is 6, which means that the ordered pair negative 2, 6 appears on that parabola right there. All right, I just wrote this out at the bottom just so that we can talk about it for a second. Unit um, 2 was a mixture of stuff that you guys did last year as well as some new stuff. Um, we kind of extended all of the basic system of equations, which you did learn last year, and we extended that into the inequalities and then into sequences, which again ends up being a math eight topic because it's a linear equation. Um, what's important is that arithmetic sequences are linear. When it is graphed, it is a line. So we're talking about linear function because when we graph it, it's a line. And the slope is the same as the common difference. So what happens if you want to make ordered pairs for this is the term number would be your x and then the actual term would be the y. So when we were going back up here, since the first term is 3, 
that would be the point 1, 3. Since the second point is 7, or the second term is 7, that point would be 2, 7. Since the third term is 11, that point would be 3, 11. So all of these can be graphed, and then again, um, arithmetic sequences are linear functions, so they make a line when you graph. All right, that's it for unit two. So you can pick up the um, sheet that says unit two, your turn to practice, um, and then I will get the answers posted on Edmodo for you.